Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Hope that you are doing well. This lecture is about the novel A Passage to India written by E. M. Forster. In the previous lecture, we have already covered three chapters of the first part of the novel, and in this lecture, we will cover four chapters that are chapter number four, five, six, and seven. And the next chapters will be covered in the upcoming lectures. Chapter number four starts with Mr. Turton sending invitations to different people, especially Indians, uh, for the bridge party that he proposed to arrange uh, in in the previous chapter. And in this bridge party, a Mr. Turton would act as a host to men and Mrs. Turton to women. This uh, invitation by uh, Mr. Turton is interpreted by uh, different uh, people in multiple ways, especially the Indians. Uh, interpret this invitation in multiple ways. Some consider it uh, good. Uh, some say that there is a conspiracy behind this uh, uh, invitation. While the most prominent one uh, is that of Mahmud Ali, he says Turton would never do this unless compared. Those high officials are different. They sympathize. The Viceroy sympathizes. According to Mahmud Ali, uh, Mr. Turton would never ever have done such thing on his own. And he thinks that uh, this party must have been arranged uh, on, on the orders of high official and they must have been invited uh, on the orders of high officials. And Mr. Turton is compelled to invite us, according to Mahmud Ali. While Nawab Bahadur is uh, happy, Nawab Bahadur is basically a wealthy Muslim landowner. He is a loyalist to the British government and this title of Nawab is also given to him by the British government. He is happy because he is also invited uh, for the bridge party and he advises his friends as well to attend this party. While uh, his friends tell him different reasons for not attending the party and one of his friends tell him that he will make that Nawab Bahadur will make himself cheap if he attends this party. While uh, Nawab Bahadur replies that the invitation is worded very graciously. He means to say that they have been invited very graciously so they must attend this party. The uh, writer then tells us that the Christian missionaries are not invited in this party. This uh, religious people, these Christian missionaries believe that uh, they are invited by God in the divine parties. They believe in such kind of parties and they believe that they will be invited to heaven uh, by God. And according to them, in such divine parties arranged by God, there is no racism, there is no hatred and everyone is allowed. This uh, indicates that uh, the British people in India are fed up with religion as well. They do not care about their religion. They do not care about religious people. What they care only is materialism and worldly affairs, worldly desires. They have no concern with religion and religious affairs. That's why they have not invited this religious people uh, in this bridge party. Chapter number five is all about the bridge party. The whole account of bridge party is given in this chapter. Uh, even the first line of this chapter, the first sentence of this chapter five says that the bridge party was not a success. At least it was not what Mrs. Moore and Miss Quested were accustomed to consider a successful party. This beginning sentence of the fifth chapter suggests that uh, the bridge party was a, was an unsuccessful party and it uh, fails to achieve its target and its goal of joining uh, the British and the Indian people. Why was uh, it a success, an unsuccessful party and what, what are the reasons behind it? All the reasons are given in this chapter. In the beginning of this chapter, we are uh, informed that the Indians arrive earlier to the bridge party because uh, they have never ever been to the club before. They have never ever uh, been invited in such kind of parties. So they do not know when to go and what time to go. So they are the first ones to arrive in this bridge party. And then uh, there is a great physical distance between the English and the Indians in this party. This uh, uh, In this bridge party, the English and the British 
the english and the indians are settled very far from each other and this uh, great physical distance suggests that this uh, indians and the english cannot be united with each other their hatred towards each other cannot be diminished they can never ever be united then uh, in this chapter the hatred of british towards indians is also shown uh, when uh, mr turton says i refuse to shake hands with any of the men unless it has to be the nawab bahadur he says that he does not want to shake his hands with any of the men especially any indian but he will shake hands with nawab bahadur why only nawab bahadur because he is a wealthy man he is a landlord he is a loyalist to the british government that's why they want to shake hands with nawab bahadur means they want to be friend with nawab bahadur but not with a, with a common indian next uh, this uh, so called and imaginary superiority of english women over indian ladies is shown uh, when mrs turton tells mrs moore that you are superior to them anyway means here them means the indian ladies you are superior to them anyway don't forget that you are superior to everyone in india except one or two of the ranis and they are on equality the english ladies especially mrs turton think that uh, they are superior to the indian ladies that's why mrs turton tells uh, mrs moore to consider herself uh, Uh, as well superior to the indian ladies and they think that the indian ranis the ranis they are also indian they consider ranis is equal as they are they consider ranis equal to them why because these ranis are uh, wealthy and they are loyalist to the british government that's why they consider themselves equal to them and other common uh, indian ladies are considered to be inferior to the in- english ladies mrs turton uh, then behaves uh, with the indian ladies in the bridge party like her servants she speaks few words with the indian ladies uh, just like she talks to her servants miss adila and mrs moore uh, also talk to some indian ladies and they are invited by an indian family with a quite strange and uh, unpronounceable name mr and mrs bhattacharya according to uh, miss adila it is a strange and unpronounceable name this uh, miss miss adila and mrs moore are invited by this indian family and this indian family promises to send their own carriage to pick miss adila and mrs moore up and take them to their home Mr Fielding uh, spends all his time with the Indians he is unlike other Englishmen he spends uh, most of his time with the with the Indians and he eats indian foods as well then when uh, uh, mr fielding comes to know that miss adila and miss uh, mrs moore have been invited by an indian family he becomes very happy and he also invites adila and mrs moore for tea and on adila's request uh, fielding promises to invite dr aziz as well uh, adila has not met dr aziz yet but she has heard about him from mrs moore that's why she wants to meet dr aziz and she requests uh, mr fielding to invite dr aziz as well in in the tea party when this bridge party is over nawab bahadur is happy because he is tra- treated well while mahmud ali does not change his opinion he still thinks that uh, this party has been arranged by the uh, orders of high officials then uh, adila thinks of her married life with rani when the party is over she thinks of her married life with rani she imagines uh going to the club with roni every evening uh, she imagines meeting the arrogant english men and women every day and inviting them to their house and uh, being invited by them she also uh, visualizes uh, her married life with the same dull routines and her wish 
of seeing the real India falling behind. She thinks that she cannot fulfill her wish of seeing the real India and the real Indians. That's why she decides that she cannot ruin her life with Ronnie and she decides not to marry with Ronnie. She thinks that I should never get like that means she thinks that she should not destroy her life like that and she should not get married with Ronnie. When they are back home, Mrs. Moore uh, informs Ronnie that she and Adila are not happy with the way the Indians are treated. She tells him that they are disappointed with the way the English people, the British people are treating Indians in India. Uh, on this, uh, Ronnie gets angry and he says that we are not out here for the purpose of behaving pleasantly. He says that they are not in India for behaving pleasantly, they are here for doing justice and maintaining peace. While uh, Mrs. Mover disapproves all his ex excuses and says, tells him that uh, he should behave pleasantly because uh, God has sent them on this earth to behave pleasantly and to behave uh, in a kind manner with people. She says because India is part of the earth and God has put us on the earth in order to be pleasant to each other. God has put us on earth to love our neighbors and to show it and he is omnipresent even in India to see how we are succeeding. She is trying to convince her son Mr. Ronnie to behave in, in, in a well manner with people be it Indians or the English. She says that they have been sent to this earth by God uh, in order to behave pleasantly and in a kind manner with people. So that, that's why they should behave in, in such, such a well manner with people whether they are in India or any other place. Overall uh, in this chapter uh, the relationship between the English uh, and the Indians is shown especially the behavior of the English is shown towards Indian. Indians that how the uh, English treat the Indians in India. Chapter number six, uh, uh, you see that in chapter number five in the bridge party, the main character of the novel, Dr. Aziz, is absent in, in that bridge party. And the reasons of his absence are given in this chapter number six. In chapter number six, uh, we see that Dr. Aziz meets Mr. Calendar in the hospital. Uh, where Dr. Aziz works and Mr. Calendar asks him that why he didn't show up. If you remember in, in the beginning uh, of this novel, probably in chapter number two, Dr. Aziz was uh, summoned by Mr. Calendar and when Dr. Aziz uh, went to the house of Mr. Calendar, he came to know that Mr. Calendar had left without leaving him any message and he could not meet Mr. Calendar. That's why Mr. Ma Mr. Calendar asks him that why he didn't show up. Dr. Aziz tells him the reasons, but uh, Mr. Calendar does not believe him and he leaves in anger. Dr. Aziz also wants to attend the party, the bridge party with his colleague, Dr. Pannalal, but suddenly he remembers that it is his wife's death anniversary. That's why he becomes sad, he becomes uh, depressed, that's why he does not want to attend this bridge party. He is sad and sensitive, that's why he does not want to attend this party. Then uh, the account of married life, life of Dr. Aziz is given. He does not uh, love uh, his wife in the beginning uh, since it is an arranged marriage. But when he gets first child and uh, because of the sincerity and devotion of his wife, he starts loving her and starts feeling for her. He then uh, takes out a photograph of his uh, deceased wife and becomes uh, unhappy and depressed. And in the evening after taking tea, he visits Hamidullah's home. When he reaches Hamidullah's home, he comes to know that Hamid Hamidullah is, is still in the bridge party and he is not home. 
that's why he tags Hamidullah's horse and a mallet that is a stick uh, to you that is used to play polo with. He tags Hamidullah's horse and mallet to play polo in the ground. He goes to the ground and uh, encounters an English soldier there and he plays polo with him in the ground. Then uh, Dr. Panna Lal returns from uh, the bridge party and he meets Dr. Aziz and asks him about his absence. Dr. Aziz tells him that he went to the post office to post some letters but doc Dr. Panna Lal does not believe him and tells that your absence I may remark drew commentaries. Dr. Panna Lal informs uh, Dr. Dr. Aziz that his absence was noted by the high officials, by the higher authorities, due to which uh, Dr. Aziz becomes worried. When Dr. Aziz comes back home, he finds a letter, uh, a kind of chit on the table with a government stamp on it. Seeing this letter on the table, uh, Dr. Aziz becomes scared and frightened because he thinks that this must be, this must prove disastrous or destructive for Dr. Aziz and it might be a, a letter of his dismissal from his government service due to his absence in the bridge party. But when he opens the letter, he is relieved because it is an invitation from uh, Mr. Fielding for tea, a, for tea party which Mr. Fielding has arranged and he has also invited uh, Miss Adila and Mrs. Moore. Dr. Aziz then once again visits Hamidullah's home and finds out that Hamidullah is not home. He has gone somewhere and he meets Mahmood Ali there and Mahmood Ali is... Uh, Mahmood Ali he makes fun of the bridge party. It was all about chapter 6 and in chapter 7 we see that some little details of uh, Mr. Fielding's personality are given. Uh, he is uh, over 40, he is a prince, he is the principal of a government college, he is cooperative and attentive to his students. He is uh, liked very much by his uh, students, he is liked very much by the uh, Indians but he is not liked by the English people because he is unlike the English people. He is not like, uh, he is not arrogant like the other English people. Dr. Aziz arrives because uh, Mr. Fielding has invited Dr. Aziz and uh, Ms. Adila Ms., uh, uh, and Mrs. Moore for the tea party and Dr. Aziz arrives. Uh, when, when he arrives, Fielding is busy dressing and asks him to feel comfortable. Mr. Fielding says, please make yourself at home. This uh, friendly remark uh, by Mr. Fielding has very positive effects on Dr. Aziz and he becomes like, uh, he becomes comfortable and he thinks that this is the Englishman who can be friend with the Indians. Dr. Aziz then offers his collar stud to the principal, uh, Mr. Fielding, and they become friendly, like they start friendly conversation and Fielding also informs Dr. Aziz that he has invited uh, two, English, two English ladies and Professor Godbole. While uh, Dr. Aziz does not like this idea of uh, meeting the English ladies at first place because, uh, of, the, because of the fame of the uh, English ladies in India and because of the arrogance of the, the English ladies. That's why he does not want to meet the uh, English ladies and he wants to spend, spend all of his time with his newly framed uh, Mr. Fielding. But when the ladies arrive, uh, Dr. Aziz uh, finds them friendly and cooperative and he finds them unlike other English women and then he starts having conversation with them. The ladies uh, then complain about the strange behavior of uh, uh, Bhattacharyas, the, the Indian family who were supposed to send them their carriage to pick them up but the carriage never ever arrived. That's why the ladies complain about this strange behavior of the Indian family. But Dr. Aziz uh, criticizes all the Hindus for being negligent and unpunctual just because of this uh, egged 
of uh, this Indian family, Dr. Aziz criticizes all the Hindus uh, and he says that Hindus are negligent and unpunctual. Uh, Aziz also tells them that uh, the, the Indian family would have changed their mind just because they would not have a big home and their home would be small that's why they would have changed uh, their mind. Aziz then, uh, Dr. Aziz then invites uh, the English ladies to his house but uh, realizing that uh, he also has a small house and he does not have a big and beautiful house, he suddenly changes the subject talking about other things, started talking about other things. Then Professor God Godwale arrives and when he arrives, Fielding offers to take Mrs. Moore around the campus. He offers uh, Mrs. Moore to show her the campus. When they go to see the campus, Adila, Aziz and Godbole are left. When uh, Miss Adila reminds uh, Dr. Aziz of his invitation, that uh, Dr. Aziz uh, has invited them to his home, Dr. Aziz becomes horrified just because of, uh, of thinking that he does not have a big and beautiful home. Uh, he suddenly or impulsively invites them to the Marabar Caves. He tells them that uh, he will uh, host this uh, English people at the Marabar Caves instead of his home. Then suddenly Ronnie arrives and uh, as usual he be starts behaving impolitely and when he does not find his mother he behaves more impolitely. But when Fielding and Mrs. Moore return, uh, Ronnie starts insulting Fielding. He insults Fielding and says that I say, old man, do excuse me, but I think perhaps you oughtn't to have left Miss Quested alone. He insults uh, Fielding for having left Miss Quested alone with two Indian men and calls uh, Mr. Fielding an old man. Uh, in, a, in a kind of rude manner and shows his real face that he does not uh, even respect his elders. When this uh, English people are leaving, when uh, Adila and uh, Mrs. Moore are leaving, God Bole starts singing a religious song and when the song is finished, the ladies leave. In this chapter, two types of English people are shown. One type is that of Mr. Roni, uh, who thinks himself superior, who is arrogant, who is rude and who behaves impolitely with everyone who does not uh, respect his elders. And the other kind, uh, the other type of English people is that of Mr. Fielding, Miss Adila and Mrs. Moore, who are friendly with Indians, who are not uh, uh, arrogant, who does not feel superior uh, to other Indian people and who are very friendly, very cooperative with the Indians as well. That's uh, it, that's enough for today's lecture. If you have any confusion, if you have uh, any problem, you can ask your questions in the comment section. Thank you.